Hey there, Adam here. We're going to dig into some really cool Bill Evans sounding chord voicings for guitar. I'll lay odds that most of you probably didn't recognize those chord shapes at all. Don't worry, I'm going to show you what I played, I had to transcribe it, and I'll show you some different options of what I could have played. Starting with the shapes, you probably notice that all the shapes are a similar angle on the fretboard. Third and fourth fingers are above the first and second. That's in order to make playing them much easier because things stay relatively consistent from chord shape to chord shape. Also, some of these chords are super rich in upper structure tension notes, fortified, so you can get that attention getting jazz stank face. They're also gonna all be on strings one, two, three, and four, and some two, three, and four. That's because it's the most easiest way to get major seconds and minor seconds without incorporating open strings, which happens to be a big component to capture the sound of Bill Evans chords. And it just sounds, well, more piano-like in the higher registers. There's a lot of two fives in Beautiful Love, so let's take a look at what I played in the first four measures. Essentially, the first voicing is a G minor add 9. It produces an E minor 7 flat 5 add 11. We get the 11th, the flat 5th, the 7th, and then the 3rd. Very hip and modern sounding. Then we slide that same shape up 3 frets and we get a voicing for an A7 sharp 5 flat 9 sharp 9. Quick tip, you can use this as a rule of thumb on minor 2 fives. Whatever voicing you're using for the minor 7 flat 5, slide the same shape up a minor 3rd 3 frets and you have a voicing for your 5 chord. Now we have the sharp 9, the 3rd, the sharp 5, and then the flat 9 on top. Next, the D minor 9, we have the 7th, 9th, and then the 3rd, and we get. Then if you sharpen the 9th on the 3rd string, and the 3rd on the 2nd string, you get a great little voicing for a D7 sharp 9. And we could also put the flat 9 in there dropping that note down two frets, E flat. Most of these won't be your traditional looking or sounding chords. Most of them will not contain a root or even a third or a fifth at times. We're going for sparse sounds. A lot of what Bill played was kind of not less is more, but less is simply less cluttered. It's all about adding the juicy notes by playing the least amount as possible. He got more breathing room for the bass, the drums, and any lines that he might play on top, especially in a trio setting, like what Bill normally did. 
Later on in the tune, I did this on the same 2-5. We have on the minor seven flat five voicing, we have the flat five, seven, the root, and the eleventh. You can also do the same move as before and just slide the shape up a minor third to get a voicing for the five chord. So it would look, it'd be like. I could have put a different A7 in there too to step down to the D minor 11 voicing. This new chord has the third, the sharp five, the seventh, and then the sharp nine. Then we step down to our other chord that we had before, which is just more of a, a more simplified A7 flat nine, no altered fifth or, or a sharp nine in it. And then we get to the D minor 11 voicing, and it doesn't even contain the third, but it does have the fifth, the seventh, the root, and the 11th. Someone will likely play the third in a solo or a bass line, so we're covered. Then I move down to what looks like an F major 7, but here we're using it to get a D minor 9. Since it has the third, fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. So when the bass plays D, it sounds like D minor 9. Then I move three notes up one fret, and now you have something that works great for a D7 sharp nine, sharp five. You got the third, sharp five, the seventh, and then the sharp nine. Let's have a look at what I played on the major two five in the next line of the song, measures five through seven. I use the same major seven trick off the third of the chord to get G minor nine like I did for the D minor nine earlier. Another quick tip, play a major seven voicing off the third of a minor seven chord to get a minor nine chord. To get D minor nine, F is the third of D minor, so play F major seven. To get G minor nine, play a B flat major seven. To get E minor 9, play a G major 7 voicing. Any major 7 voicing will work. It's just a B major 7, but when you put G on the bottom, you get G minor 9. All you have to do is drop the F on the second string to an E, and now you have a great sounding C13 voicing. You have flat 7, the 9, the 3rd, and then finally the 13th on the first string. And then check this out for the F major 7. I use the same chord I used for D minor 9. Remember that they're interchangeable, meaning that you can play a D minor 7 chord for an F of, of some kind. Actually, you'll get an F6. And an F major 7 for a D minor chord. I could have played it like this as well. or like this. Or I could have stayed in one place to play all three chords. And that's like hardly moving, well, I'm not moving anywhere actually. Cool, right? You know, sometimes working on something like these new chord shapes can be challenging on your own. 
So I came up with a great downloadable lesson for you that gives you all of the available chord voicing options on every chord for Beautiful Love. That way, you can work out your own unique ways to play through the song while adapting these new chord shapes into your chord vocabulary. I'll also include the full transcription of the chords that I played at the beginning of the video. The link is below. I'll meet you there.